Once we have this idea of a limit is what the output is approaching or getting close to, we can take a look at finding a limit from a graph. But before we do, we have to first understand what is meant by the one-sided limit. We might see something like the limit as x approaches a, and then you'll see a little negative up above it to the right of f of x. When you see that little negative up above it, that means we only are interested in the limit from the left. In other words, if we started at negative infinity and got closer and closer to this number, what are we getting close to just from the left? If I see the limit as x approaches a from a positive side, that means we're only coming in from the right. In other words, we're starting at positive infinity and coming closer and closer to the function. What are we getting close to? And it also results in this interesting conclusion then that when we just say the limit as x approaches a of f of x without the plus or minus, that only works, that only equals the limit if and only if, IFF is the math way of writing, if and only if the limit as x approaches a from the left of the function is the same as the limit as x approaches a from the right, it's equal to that L of the limit. So it has to work on both sides for the overall limit to exist. Let's take a look at an example on a graph. So we'll draw a graph in here. And we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3 up, 1 down, and we'll go 1, 2 to the left. And I'm going to draw my function that's going to come in here and wiggle around with an open dot at 1, negative 1, and the closed dot at 1, 2. Then I'm going to come back to that open dot, and it's going to bend and come up here with an open dot at 3, comma 2, and then a closed dot at 3, comma negative 1, and then the graph is going to shoot up from there. Based on this graph, we're going to find some limits. But first, actually, before we get too far into it, let's make sure we understand what these open dots and closed dots are. If I want to find f of 1 on this graph, I'm interested in when the x value is 1. Here, the x value is 1, but you notice the x value is not where the open dot is. It's where the closed dot is. So we're going to say f of 1 is equal to 2, because the closed dot represents where the function really is. But if I ask for the limit as x approaches 1 of the function, the limit is asking what is the graph getting close to. And a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, not exactly at the point, but close to the point, we're getting closer and closer to an output of negative 1 on that graph. And so we're going to say the limit as x approaches 1 is negative 1. Let's look at this one. What's the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, that's what the negative sign means, of f of x? If I follow this function from the negative infinity and get closer and closer to x equals 3, we see the graph is getting closer and closer to a height of y equals 2. So the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the left is 2. But look what happens when we take the limit as x goes to 3 from the right of our function. If I'm coming in from infinity on the right, positive infinity, we see the graph comes down closer and closer to 3, and the y value there is getting closer and closer to negative 1. That equals negative 1. So then if I were to ask, what's the limit as x approaches 3 in general of f of x, we notice that it's going to different values on the left and the right. Coming from the left, it's approaching a positive 2. From the left, it's approaching a negative 1. It's not the same on both sides, so we're going to say that solution does not exist. D and E, the limit does not exist. 
In our next video, we're going to take a look at how we can find limits using algebra.